I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas, and at 13, my grandma passed away and we moved to Georgia. A year after that, my grandpa passed away as well, and my mom became an alcoholic. Mom spiraled down very quickly, doing drugs in the kitchen, and was drinking, and verbally being abusive to me. It just wasn't the mom that I knew. My heart shattered into several pieces because I knew this was not my mom. And so I made the decision to call the cops and wrote my statement. I witnessed my mom get thrown up against a wall and handcuffed. So when I was taken away from my mom at 14, I lost all hope for a family. I didn't think that anyone was gonna be capable of loving me the way that my mom did. From 16 to 18, I have lived in six foster homes and one group home. When I first entered care, my faith in God was very low. I was not going to church. I wasn't praying. But when I moved with a foster family, they completely opened my perspective to God. And we prayed every night at dinner. They even introduced me to Inside Out at Browns Bridge. I first met Lacey my sophomore year at Inside Out because she was my small group leader. And so Lacey would pick me up right before church, and then I would get to stay with them until dinner time. Eventually, Scott would start saying that he didn't like it because he felt like he was dropping me off at an airport and that I was leaving and they wouldn't see me again. One night when Lacey was bringing me back to the group home after church, she sat in the car with me and she told me that her and Scott felt God tell them that they needed to bring me into their home and to love me. Living with the Jernigans is very chaotic. The two twin girls are a handful and Lacey's a stay-at-home mom that works. So I kind of help her out with the girls as much as I can. I feel like I just have two younger sisters. It's an amazing feeling. And when I left for work the other day, she was even like, love you, Momo. And I was like, my heart, like, pew. It actually took me a very long time to believe that they genuinely cared for me and loved me. I would always be like, I'm not your blood daughter. Like, you can't love me. Like, I am not your daughter. And she was like, we love you, you are our daughter. And I was just like, how can you love someone that is not your own within like two months? Like, how does that happen? And I'm just now realizing how much they love me. But she always tells me, like, if I say something, she's always like, I love you, my daughter, my daughter, to just reiterate that I am her daughter. Being in the group home I was in, I was the oldest one there. And so I was just felt like there's all these younger kids and they just needed all this attention and that they weren't getting because there's so many of us. And so if they were in like a single foster home, they could be getting the attention they needed, the care they needed, and like the guidance they need to like be okay and be successful. A lot of people have the view that teenagers are drug addicts and juvenile detention kids and that we're just these horrible people. I'm in that category and I'm not that way in any form. And I just want people to know that not every teenager is like that. There are a lot of teens in the system even possibly more than there are younger kids. We need a home just as much as they do, and I promise we're just as loving as they are. I'm just excited that like I do have a family to come home to, and I pray all the time that it stays this way because I have fallen in love with this family.